Today we're going to be starting a new section in in class and we're going to be using our newfound AutoCAD skills to do uh, real civil engineering stuff and and coming back to surveying and the class is the idea here is you know this is AutoCAD for civils and environmental engineers and we like to put in uh, just like the SolidWorks classes for the mechanicals they talk about how mechanical design works and and your normal three section views of, of different parts and and how to do part basics that you'd use in mechanical engineering and civil engineering we're going to kind of cover the same basics that you as a future civil and environmental engineer um, hopefully will remember and know right and you'd be expected to know this stuff usually as you come out uh, and work on the job and that's that's related to surveying right and this is you know s specific to civil and environmental engineering is we deal with stuff out in the real world we're not making parts uh, in in an office or a factory we're making things that exist out on the ground in the real world and the way we relate all that to each other is we use surveying right, for that and we don't have a surveying class at Valpo right now but we uh, you should still understand the basics because you're going to have to deal with surveyors uh, in whatever job, both both fields, uh, you're definitely going to have surveys coming in. You're going to have to work off those surveys and understand the terminology for that, let alone be able to plot things in AutoCAD and, and draw things uh, based off of surveys. And that's really what today's in-class and homework is, is going to be focused on, is how to do this stuff in the... Uh, taking off of real surveys that come in and so the examples well, we're using are our survey plats and and descriptions property descriptions and really every project we do starts with a property description someone went out and surveyed it and told you here's your boundary lines and then you have to do your stuff you know, whatever your project you're you're working on within those boundaries right whether it's a building or a road or uh, environmental remediation or a super fun site or something they've all somewhere have a uh, a plat which is what we call the the survey for the property a plat plat we have a plat which is showing this is your property and you have to make all your stuff fit inside that because that's all you own is where those boundaries are and it's not at all uncommon that you know the start of the project someone has to serve or draw all this in take that plat that came from the surveyor and draw it all in and and make sure that you know your base drawings have the right boundaries uh, to get started that's why surveying matters so that's why we have this lecture uh, today all right this is unusual to have a lecture session uh, in in AutoCAD, usually it's pretty hands-on, right? But this is um, this is more than just hands-on because this is kind of the weird stuff. We got some weird stuff uh, coming up today, right? So for that, so we're going to go over these surveying basics so you understand what it is it's telling you as we go through, and and that's what we're that's what we're on about today. I mean, moving forward, so surveying basics. There's, uh, we, we have a system we call meets and bounds, which is go so far to this thing and, and then turn and do another angle and then go so far in another direction until you get to this point and then go so far there and turn and do another point. They call that a meet and bounds uh, description. And it's like, yes, yeah, how you would describe a boundary area. Now in the old days, they would say go to a rock and then um, go five degrees off uh, you know, off due north until you come to an oak tree and then turn right and go so far. You know, in the 1700s, that was great, um, early 1700s maybe, because, you know, things were pretty new then and that's, you know, I know where that rock is and I know where that tree is, that's fine, right? Well, 100 years later, no one knows where that rock is, nobody knows where that tree is. That tree's long gone, it's been chopped down and used for firewood back in the colonial days, or maybe you built your cabin out of it, All right? That stuff is gone. And they would say, you know, across this pasture, uh, and until you get to the oak tree, well, things grow up, right? Maybe that pasture is gone, maybe it's a field now, maybe, maybe there's now a whole, um, no one farmed it for a while, so that's just a whole bunch of trees, and there's 14 oak trees now. No one knows which one, right? Nah, that wasn't a very good surveying system, all right, for that. So our founding fathers, including George Washington, who was a surveyor, um, they decided to do a better job, right? And as we expanded, as the country uh, settlers, uh, European settlers, I should say, moved west, they came up with a, a way to um, parcel off 
property and sell it. Right. They used to, you've heard the term as busy as a land office or something. Right. These land offices used to be set up in a new region, in a new territory, and people could come in and they could buy pieces of property from the government. The government had bought the property and or stole it, whichever way you <laughs> some of both from the, the Native Americans. They would pay something for it, but not what it was worth, right? Or just take it. And once the government owned the property, then they would sell it. And that's actually how we paid off the original debt of the United States is by selling property. <laughs> and so that's, uh, we had a zero debt for a while back in the 1800s because we'd sold so much property. And settlers, European settlers could come out, move west with their wagons and whatever, and buy pieces of property. And this, we're going to get into that, but that is our entire um, public land survey system was based on how to parcel off um, part, uh, land and have a very clear description of it that everyone will understand and that you can go back and recreate it, right? So instead of going from the rock over to the tree and down to the creek and then follow the creek over for 400 feet, we now say you're going to go to Township 47 North, uh, Range 14 East, and you're going to start at the southwest corner of that section, and you're going to go 1,000 feet, blah, 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 blah. Right. And the, uh, a big job in the late 1700s and early 1800s was uh, teams of surveyors going out and setting all of these points, making a grid across the entire uh, western U.S., starting from the original, the boundaries of the original colonies and going west, that is still in place and all those corner sections can still be found and property descriptions written in 1880 in northern indiana we can still follow exactly where that property description is and find that exact spot all right i mean literally down to half an inch off maybe uh, which is pretty awesome right and this and we have really good surveying equipment now they didn't have that great of survey equipment then but it was still pretty darn good it's pretty impressive uh, how well uh, it all worked Right. And when, again, we're still using the exact same corners that they set in the late 1800s as they came through Indiana. So this portion of Indiana, 1850s, 1860s, is when all these surveys were getting done. Right. And remember, it was pretty wooded back then. This is a rough job uh, for that. Uh, and there's still we still use this. Even Alaska now has you know a system like this in place. So that's that's the overview. And we start off with this with this meets and bounds things and. We have a, a description of an angle called a bearing. And a bearing is, if we started here, let's say we're at this point right here, a bearing says, go this direction. This is your bearing, right? Maybe you've heard that term in a ship, what's your bearing? Or an airplane, what's your bearing? Um, we do the same thing in surveying. That's where it came from. And so you would say here, well, I'm going to stand um, here on this this point and I'm going to look north and I'm going to turn 80 degrees to the east. That's what this means. This is our bearing. Uh, we're going to uh, be at a point and we're going to go from due north, we're going to go 80 degrees to the east and then we're going to travel this far, 152 feet. All right. And that's how we describe these bearings. We First it's an angle and then it's how far do you go to this next point. And then we're going to do that from there to this point. And then we're going to do it from there to this point to this point and then back easy to this. Right, this would be our point of beginning right, for that. This permanent reference mark is usually a section corner. We're going to get into that uh, before. This would be like the parcel you want to sell to somebody. So you had a surveyor come out, and he has described it this way. And he will make a plat of that, which is a drawing, which is what we were learning how to do today in class uh, for that. So, the, so these angles we call bearings, and they're all referenced off of um, the cardinal directions. And we usually start with either north or south. And so we'll start either north or south, and then we're going to go east or west from that that uh, direction you're facing. All right? And it's one way to look at this. If you're standing on that point, we say, well, you're standing in the middle here, right? And so that first letter in the bearing, this N or S, is which direction should you face? You're going to face either north or you're going to face south All right? from that point. All right, face north and now walk uh, uh, four degrees to the east off of that north line. Right, and that's this bearing here. Or you're facing north now, turn 60 degrees to the east, and then walk this direction. Right, there's our bearing. North, go 80 degrees east. Right, You can see that. North 90 degrees east is due east. We don't say that. So we rarely say that in the surveys. We say north 90 degrees east or south 90 degrees east. Either one. Uh, through that. So you can see that's we're referencing it all from there. Right, a little crazy, and so you know it'll come up. Well, what's the angle between these two? 
All right. And that's something in surveying you're going to have to figure, <laughs> figure out and measure that. And yeah, it's a little crazy you know, because you're measuring this one off the south line. You're measuring this one off the north line. You can't just uh, add or subtract those two numbers from each other to define the angle between them. It doesn't, doesn't work that way. So I'll, I'll leave that to you to think about how to, how to measure that, <laughs> that angle. But that's, why, that's how we do bearings. And the idea is if you started at a point, you could follow these bearings. And it's like instructions. Okay, stand here. Actually, stand here. <clears throat> Look south. Now turn yourself 45 degrees to the east. Now walk this direction for so many feet. You get to the next point. Let's flip back to this one. You get to this next point, and now you're going to stand here. You're going to look south, and you're going to turn 15 degrees to the west and walk 160 feet. And you come down here. Okay, now you stand here, look south, and now turn 85 degrees to the west and walk 151 feet. And you come over here. Right? You could retrace these steps in the field, and surveyors really do that. If when you sell property or buy property, quite often you'll have a surveyor go back and recreate the property corners for you. And that way the buyer and the seller both know exactly where the property starts and ends. And, and if there's a property dispute, that's what you do. You hire a surveyor to come out. They will retrace this with their fancy equipment and be very exact about it. And they can retrace that and set all of these point um, uh, corners again. And we still call it reestablish. We could reestablish all these corner points around your your property right so that's how you know you're at where you're at and what and you'll know what what you bought this is exactly what you bought right instead of thinking well i know it's yeah, it's about 200 feet here to that direction it's about 150 feet there right well we can be much more exact right down to fractions of an inch exact through that so that's a bearing and that's you know, kind of weird if you haven't been in um if you haven't had an internship or anything, it may sound kind of weird to do it this way, but that's what we do. And this is an example of a subdivision um, parcel plat that you would get. And this is when you're dividing land and you're going to build houses on it. This is what it, this is a simplified version, but this is what a plat would look like, a parcel plat. And this is showing here's some property and we've split it into lots. We split it into five different lots through there. Here's a road in the middle. we got some arc lines in here here is all of these dimensions for that and here's all these bearings right this is almost due north this is almost uh, due east for that all right you're one second off second is a pretty small unit of measurement it's very hard to measure that uh, accuracy right for that you'd also for each individual lot within here you would have a bearing along that in a in a written out property description, which you're going to be sick of seeing by the time you do the in class today uh, for that. So you'll see what that uh, what a, a property description looks like, and to be able to recreate that property description physically in space, you know, physically being in an AutoCAD even, the is is really helpful as an engineer in, in our field. You know, for that and usually we start somewhere we start at some corner we started a section corner i'm going to tell you what section corners are here in a second we'll start at some section corner and then you move up to the area of interest and then you have a point of beginning and then you start describing your your point of beginning around you know, from that All right so that's that's how we do it um, once you have these lots described in a properly platted and approved um, plat for a survey you can record these at your county office, um, the county recorder. That's their job is they record documents. They can record uh, this, this parcel plat. And from then on, when you sell or buy property, you just say, hey, I'm in, I don't know, Painted Hills. I'm in, uh, yeah, plat book block 31. I am in Painted Hills tract and I am lot two. And you don't have to write the entire survey description of lot two all you have to say is i'm in painted hills tract lot two and anybody who wants to can go to the county and look up what the what the true description of painted hills tract lot two is and know exactly what it is and so you've you've basically created it's kind of like a shortcut right it is way easier to describe that on a bill of sale uh, for property it is okay it's lot two i'm in painted hills tract lot two and down here, it tells you where to find it, right? It's in uh, map book 192, page 23 of this county in whatever state. And anyone can go there, and it's all online now. Anybody can go there and look it up and see what the exact survey was for that. But it, it's like a, a shorthand. It's just say, hey, lot two in Painted Hills Tract. Bam, you got it. All right, so this is um, 
But to get to that point, and the reason they set it up that way is to make it that easy. It's, uh, super easy to buy and sell property, right? If you have that set up. To do that, they started this public land survey system. And you can see there's a, a map of where they used the, the public land survey system, right? The original colonies were not part of this because it was before they had this idea, before they came up with this plan. I don't know who came up with this, but somebody did back again uh, when they were moving west. European settlers were moving west. They were setting all these tracks up and for that. And you can see Ohio, hmm, apparently they were testing out some different systems, right? Not real... <laughs> um, not real, uh, uh, I guess, standardized across that. They have some different systems within it, uh, right? But this was set up in 1785, right? Right, very new. And 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 um, and I, I wasn't kidding. Um, George Washington was a surveyor, and he worked out in Western Virginia uh, a lot, um, doing surveys. And that was before they had this public land survey system, right? Because you know, he was a little bit before this time, 1785. They were still doing the old meets and bounds systems, but you know, surveying was important and, and describing people's land so you can buy and sell them and have trade uh, was important. It was after then, you know, the U.S. obviously became independent and they had bought the Louisiana Purchase at that point from the French, who probably didn't really own it either. But anyway, we had uh, we had these new territories, and so they were like, well, how do we how do we set this up that we could sell these? Because we want settlers to move west. That's our manifest destiny. I mean, think that's the history term for it. Um, and so we send surveyors out. Surveyors go first. They parcel out everything into pieces. And then we can sell those off at a land office. And each territory had their own land office. And it would move as, as, uh, as you sold all the property. It would move west. All right. And forward there. Here's Indiana. You can see we've got our principal meridian and a baseline for that. Everything is measured off of that principal meridian in the baseline. I'll get into that in a second. We've got one little weird region in Indiana. It's off to the side. Um, and one more uh, piece over here by Vincennes, which was an original. There was a fort down here um, before this time. Um, during the Revolutionary War, we had a fort uh, on the Wabash, probably even before that was for fur traders. And and so it's it's got a little different survey around it All right, for that. So, well, sorry diverging into <laughs> into history sorry all right so the in indiana we've got a principal meridian that's meridian just means it's the north south line and then we've got a baseline which is the east west line and here's our origin right so if you've got euclidean coordinates you've got an origin point zero zero this is for the survey of the entire state of indiana here's our origin point why did they pick that i don't know it was handy Right. Remember, the Indiana was settled off the Ohio River, so it was, people settlers were moving up from this direction. Right. Clark, famous guy in Indiana history, he had a grant down here, um, uh, probably uh, near Corydon, and what was the original state capital down in this section, because that was the first part of the Indiana that was settled. Right. Vincennes again had its own little uh, survey section because it was right along uh, where that fort was, also. So this had early settlers uh, in it as well. Right, so we're but mostly all these townships, uh, and that's what we the smaller pieces we break Indiana into is called a township. And you think, oh, well, I live in a township, I live in you know, um, I live in Central Township, or I live in Concord Township, or something like that. Right, that's not the same, uh, it can be, but there's a survey township term which is just used by surveyors, and it may or may not line up with a, a named township, which is a civil township or a jurisdictional township for that. This is how they did it, right? And very original. Um, I guess, you know, surveyors and engineers were so original, everyone says, right? Uh, the whole thing is just based on, let's just make a grid mile by a mile wide. Bam. So that's what they did. We'll just make everything mile by a mile wide. And then we're going to split it into little sections. And we're going to subdivide it and subdivide it and subdivide it from there. But we're just going to lay out a, a straight up um, square grid across the entire country. Right. So think about it, though, a square grid. Right. If we're going to do a mile by a mile on each side across, back it up here, this entire country. Right. What could go wrong with that? Well, the curvature of the earth. The curvature of the earth could definitely go wrong with that. You can't make an exactly square mile by mile section when you know, look at your your lines of um, uh is this longitude or latitude? Longitude. Lines of longitude here. They're, they're getting closer together. And so 
things converge as you go to the north and to the south, right? And they're the widest part of these lines uh, at the equator. So that's the problem. We're trying to map an exactly rectangular grid onto a spherical body, right? It's not going to quite work. And you can see the way they, they took that into account. I mean, these guys are smart. The way they took that into account is they just adjust this after every, every township, they'll adjust it a little bit. And it's offset just a little bit. And you'll see it's off a little bit here again. That's how they adjust for that spherical uh, difference between this rectangular grid we're trying to build on a spherical body, right? And so this is this is the setup. And if you if you're from the countryside and and out in especially in Indiana, Illinois, in the countryside, every now and then you'll see a county road which you usually follow these lines. It just jogs over for no apparent reason, right? The the intersection is offset from itself to the north and south. And like, well, why didn't they line that up? Well, they didn't because they're following these old section lines, and that's exactly what they did with the original roads. Follow these section lines. Um, and that's where you can still see them mostly is in these county roads out in the countryside. They're following these old section lines. But this is what we did. So they, they divided this up. It's a mile by a mile uh, square. So each one of these is a mile by mile square uh, for that. And then these, these mile by mile squares are set into a township, which is this bigger region uh, for this. And then that, the next region up, it goes from there, right, and so forth and so forth. So those are our townships, and we'll get into a little more through that. Now, these are survey townships. They're not the political township, right? Because when people settled, they knew this was a survey township because that's what it says on their deed. They often made their political townships to be exactly right on top of the uh, surveyed townships, but not necessarily. And a lot of them don't match, about half and half, I'd say, through that. Within one of these... One of these sections, this is a uh, this is a surveyed township. It is um, it's broken into thirty six sections, six miles uh, wide by six miles tall. Each section is a mile by mile. Right? That's that mile by mile thing All right through there. And I always wondered, you know, now if we ever convert to metric, do we have to go back and change all of our surveys to kilometer by kilometer? No, I'm pretty sure we don't. <laughs> <laughs> that would really screw things up, right? But anyway, so the, it seemed like a really good system at the time in 1785. We're going to go mile by mile. And each section is a mile by mile. Um, six sections across by six sections tall is one township. So there's 36 sections in every township. I don't know why. We started numbering them in the top right corner, and then we moved left. Then we zagged down. We moved back to the right. We zigzagged down, and it zigzags like this, right? It's a little bit infuriating um, in your job that they did it that way. Sometimes, well, sometimes I think it's infuriating because you're in this one, you're in section 14, and you're like, well, I'm going to the north. Oh, it's 11. What? Then you have to pull this map out. And, okay, that's how they remembered. Okay, I got it now. Well, it's all on GIS now, so it's easier to find. But it used to always be kind of infuriating. Well, if I'm in section 22, okay, I know which ones are to the left and right of me. Uh, but what's north and south of me? Okay, that's weird. But if you're over here on the edge, it's even weirder. And then you got a section for a different township over here. Right? It's it's just nutty. Just remember it zigzags from the top right corner. That's the important point here. You're going to zigzag numbering from the top right. You're saying to yourself, will I ever need to know the section number? Yeah, I'm going to show you in a minute here. You're definitely going to need to know the section number on stuff. In our, in our field, you will need to know it. So section numbers. So this is now... We're, we're zooming in, right? We started out here. Here's a township. Here's an individual section. Here's the little section numbers inside of it. 36, right? Zoom in. Now I'm into that uh, one, uh, again, one township. Here's an individual section. Here's the little section numbers in it. Got it. We're zooming in even further. This is a single uh, section now uh, within that. And now they describe everything by quarters. And it just made it easy, right? So a uh, mile by mile, you know, everyone thinks that the the U.S. imperial measurement system is crazy because we have inches and we've got feet and we've got acres and how much how much space is in an acre? Forty three thousand five hundred and sixty square feet or in one acre, right? Geez, that sounds like a weird number. Where'd you come up with that? Well, you can kind of see if it's a mile by mile, how long is a mile? I mean, 5,280 feet. So if you've got a mile by a mile, if you break it into a quarter, 
that gives you 160 acres. If you break that into a quarter, that gives you 40 acres. If you break that into a quarter, that gives you 10 acres. This is what they were selling property in. They were selling it in 40 and 10 acre increments. And it was in a quarter quarter section. That's what they call this. <laughs> you can see why. It's a quarter quarter section. In this section, this is the Northwest quarter. If you wanted to buy a whole Northwest quarter of this section number or whatever, it's 160 acres. And everybody knows that, all right? So when you were selling this property off in the 1800s here in Northern Indiana, you could go into the land office and say, I'd like to buy a quarter section because I need 160 acres. Well, not many people bought that much. 40 acres was more than normal for that. If you wanted to get a farm going, and that would be considered a lot of acreage, you know, because you're plowing with the uh, mule, right? So this is considered a lot of acreage. You're in a quarter, quarter section, and it's exactly 40 acres. And it's a nice round number. Everyone liked it. Um, well, I think everybody liked it. 10 acres, right? A quarter, quarter, quarter section is, is 10 acres. A, a quarter, quarter, quarter section is 10 acres. All right. And you can see you can, and you can do halves of quarter sections and it's, you're going to be so sick of this by the end of today, right? For that. And this is exactly how we describe it still on surveys is you're in section number 14 in the uh, east half of the northeast quarter of section 14. That's this 80 acres. All right. And then it's exactly how we describe it still on surveys. All right. Seems a little weird. All right. It's blast from the past, but that's still the way it is. Um, well, we can't change it now. It's too late. Uh, not without a lot of work right, for that. Here's a little blow up again of this. All right. So this is one section. If you did the north half of the section, remember a section of 640 acres, you get 320 acres. Right. We used to measure everything in chains and rods. Oh my gosh, I'm glad we don't do that anymore, right? <laughs> so, but it was an even number, and these guys are out in the woods, you know, literally for months at a time by themselves. They're hunting to feed themselves as they, they survey all this out. They've got a chain. They literally have a chain, and they'll measure it out 80 chains across. There it is. That's one mile. And then 80 chains down, that's another mile, and so forth, through woods. And all that. So they didn't have a fancy tape measure, didn't have lasers, which is what we use now to measure distance out there. We don't have GPS. That came much later. That was in 19, you know, didn't get really useful until the 1990s, right, for that. But they're, they've got literally a chain <laughs> made out of steel, and they would measure this off in chains. And then they had a smaller unit called a rod, and they would measure smaller sections in rods for that. And that's their survey equipment. They had a transit and a bunch of axes and machetes to get through the woods and some chains. And that would be, that's how they measured all this out in such section corners for that. All right, so that's a little more history. I'm boring you. Let's move on. All right, let's practice. Let's put this into practice um, straight off of what you would see in a real survey for that. All right, we've got the northwest quarter of the southwest quarter of section 19. Hmm. Does that sound normal? No, that does not. That is some weird way to write that. We're going to work through it, but that is exactly how it is on these surveys. You're in the northwest quarter of the southwest quarter of section 19. All right? It's like backwards. It's almost backwards. Right? And I mean, that's just the way English language is, right? It's, it's the green shoe, whereas in other uh, Spanish, you'd be the shoe green. We start with the adjective and then another adjective on the noun, right? So we're the northwest quarter of the northwest quarter of section 19. Or is it, well, maybe it's not an adjective. I don't remember. All right, not an English major. Okay, so, but it's, it's a little back, which you actually almost want to start from the back end and work your way back to the left through these sentences. Section 19, southwest quarter, then go to the northwest quarter. Oh, let's look at a picture, all right? Section 19, here's section 19. Go to the southwest quarter, that's where I'm at. And then next, northwest quarter of the southwest quarter. I'm here. That's that's what that described. And that is uh, 40 acres. All right, boom, this is 640, here's 40. All right, we've got it. Let me go back up and do it again. Southwest quarter, of, uh, and then the northwest quarter of the southwest quarter of section 19. All right, so again, kind of almost start backwards. Find section 19 first, find the southwest quarter, then find the northwest quarter. Let's do the next one. South half of the northeast quarter of the northwest quarter of section 19. Section 19, northwest quarter, here, all right? Northeast quarter of the northwest quarter is here. It's a quarter, quarter section. And we're going to do south half, south half of that. Oh, my gosh. All right, this is, it is confusing. 
um, welcome to the world surveying, right? Um, the north line of the southeast quarter, the northwest quarter, yeah? Sometimes we describe that. You're going to follow one of these lines, these section lines, and we'll say that. Follow the east line of whatever quarter, quarter section. Because this is what you could find in the field, right? When you came out here in the woods as a settler, you could find that line because these points are all actually monumented, meaning there is a monument set in each one of these corners out here in the woods where there's nothing uh, else except wild animals right out here. And you could find those. You could dig those up once the survey had been through. Well, they couldn't sell you the property until the survey had been through all right, for that, so for settlers. So on the north line, the southeast quarter, the northwest quarter, here's my northwest quarter, all right? Here is the southeast quarter of the northwest quarter, and here is the north line. So that's what that described. All right. You will see this on property descriptions. <laughs> Crazy stuff, right? So this is, uh, and we still have it. It's still back there in the background. This is the GIS system from Porter County. This is a graphic information system for that. Here's the section numbers, right? There, there they are, all right? Here's campus. What section are we in? Well, here's 19, here's 30. Why aren't they in order? You know, why are these numbers not in order? Oh yeah, because we do that crazy thing where we zigzag through, right? Here's 29, here's 30, here'd be 31. Here's 19, here's 20, all right? 21's off to the right, apparently. All right, we're doing that weird zigzag. Here is section 30, and that's kind of the, the outline of it. Here's a little better view of showing these sections. This was that, um, over here was section 30. Here was 23, or maybe, oh, actually, maybe we, we cross over here. Here's section 24, though I know that one's true. Go oh, here's section 24, and so you can see where these section lines are, right? Just north, north of Gellerson out here is one of the section lines for that. So that's what our original property sections were, right? Here's section 30, all right? We're back to section 30. Gellerson's in section 30. Hey, the VUCA, you're in section 24. Eh, you're not even in our same section. All right, and you're in um, section 30, township 35 north, range 5 west. We're going to get into that uh, more. Township 35 north is you are 35 townships north of the baseline, and you're, whoa, back up, and you are five townships west of the meridian. That's what that means. All right, and it's nowadays maybe we'd have a little more technical, easier way to follow how to describe something if we were to do this again. Uh, but this works, right? This will get you there. All right, here's all the section numbers around Valpo with their numbers in it here. We were in this section in 30, Gellerson's here. Then VUCA's in 19, apparently 24 is just over here to the left. Here's 25 right, for that. Here is the township and range. So we're township 35, uh, we're range 35 north, 6 west. All right, township and range for that 35 north, 5 west over here. And so the numbers change and it must be right here, must, yeah, this, uh, light blue line is where the townships change, right? So actually, um, going between the VUCA and the west side of campus, you're in actually a different township. Whoa. Not a, just a, even a different section number, a different township. And you can see here's the township numbering, 15, 16, 17, 18, drop down, 19, 20, 21, 22. That's that weird zigzag, right? This one over here is starting up here. Here's its, um, sorry, here's its zigzag going this direction. I should have remembered. We start in the north east quarter and we zigzag through, right? This is the whole, this kind of uh, cyan colored line is a whole nother township over here. This is a survey township, 35 north, 6 west. Here's the boundary of it right, coming through there, right? And you can highlight that. Here's those township uh, numbers. 35 north, we're ranged 35 north, 6 west. That's where we are. This one, this is a little bit further west than this one, right? This is only five townships west of the Meridian. This is six townships west. They're both 35 townships north of the baseline. There we go. That's our, that's that township, right? So there's our township pieces. Let's look at the county. This is Elkhart County. And I had this map handy, that's why I picked it. I couldn't find a good one of, of Porter County. I would have used that, right? This is showing political township. So here's Jefferson Township, Harrison Township, Union Township, right? That is not the same as 35 North, 6 West, right? This is these names that people didn't like. To, like I don't think anybody in the country ever just named their township, ever name our township 35 North, 6 West. Nope. They all gave it some name after some famous person or some uh, characteristic of their location, right? So um, Union Township, I don't know, 
Locke must have been some famous guy who lived in that area. So they named it after him. Here's Olive Township. Not sure. Um, Bogo is the name of a creek. So they named this township after a creek. And right, for that, Washington, I don't know who they named that after. York, hard to say. Um, Middlebury Township is named after the town of Middlebury. Um, so forth and so on. Elkhart Township is where Goshen is located, but, El Gosh, but Elkhart City is in Concord Township. <laughs> Figure that out. Weird, right? So anyway, Elkhart Township is the center of Elkhart County um, for that. So that's those are civil or um, political township names. You can call it either one you want. Let's jump in. Here's that political township name York right? for that. But you can see on this map, we also, this map is dual purpose, right? Here is the surveyed township designations, right? And I used to work in this county, so I always pulled this sucker out when I needed to figure out what section I'm in. Look, here's section numbers. Oh my gosh, these things are real. You can find them in real life. All right, so here, township 37 north, township 38 north. That's one more township north. They're both uh, equal distant east of the prime meridian. Remember Valparaiso, we were all west of the prime meridian, the principal meridian in Indiana. Elkhart Town, or County is east of the Principal Meridian, so this is seven townships east of the Principal Meridian. The Principal Meridian runs right through South Bend, so it's the middle of St. Joe County. So we're seven townships to the east of that. There we go. And, and it turns out, actually, that um, York is a little bit stunted because it, it borders up to Michigan, and here's the state line right through here. These, these sections are, are, are cut off a little bit because it changed into a different state to the north of that. Middlebury Township just took the entire surveyed township. And so Middlebury Township is exactly six miles by six miles because they just used what it was the survey township to start with. Not every township does, um, but this one did. So Middlebury is the entire survey township, township 37 north, range 7 east. There we go. Through that. Okay, long that was a long background into the original grid that everything from there on is measured from and that we uh, build off of from that. So here is a survey plat. This is what a real survey plat looks like for a subdivision. All right, here we go. And the public land survey system, PLSS, gave us a place to start with and so that we could do this and get down to this point so we could easily buy and sell and describe property. And everybody has the same starting point and the same reference system for it. Right? It's kind of important. Why do you need to know your township and range and your section numbers Be as an engineer, both civil and environmental, is because they are on almost every permit you're ever going to apply for. From the federal government, from local governments, this is a, a stormwater permit from Elkhart County. This is an Army Corps of Engineers nationwide permit. Look, section number, township, and range. You are going to need to find all that. It used to be a big pain in the rear. It's better now that you have GIS. Still not easy to find it. And now you know how these things are numbered so you can find this stuff and you you know that you're not going to write uh, Concord in here. You're going to write Township 34 North Range 7 East. Yeah, this will be 34 North 7 East. Same down here. Um, it is on a lot of stuff, right? As you get into, into this field in engineering, you're going to see this a lot. All right, so that was a, a little sales pitch for why we're learning this. <laughs> okay, this is back to that survey. Uh, we that that plat for a subdivision. Here's what it starts right off with. It's a part of the southwest quarter of Section Four, Township Thirty Seven North, Range Seven East, Middlebury Township, Elkhart County, Indiana. Right? You now know exactly where this starts. You're in the southwest quarter of that section of this township, the survey township. You can get here. Right? You can actually physically get in your car and drive to this location. You know exactly where Township 37 North Range 7 East is, and you know where the southwest quarter of Section 4 is. You can get there. And that's that's the whole point of why we did this, right? And here it is, right? Here is a rebar found. This is uh, how we monument things now as pieces of rebar stuck in the ground. At the northwest corner of the southwest quarter of Section 4, Township 37 North, Range of Nice. And look at that little symbol there. You're going to see that in your survey uh, class today when you're doing your hand your stuff. That's right. So there it is. Here's what a property description looks like, right? It's uh, Here's this parcel, 86. It's a southwest quarter of Section 19, Township 36 North, Range 6 East. We can all find this now. Every surveyor can go out here and find this sucker. And it's in Elkhart Township. We don't really care, honestly, what political township it is because we know this. We know what survey township it's in, right? 
blah, blah, blah. And then this is going to tell you how you get started on plotting this, right? We're going to commence here and we're going to go on, right? So here's the location. General location, we're in section 19. We're within a mile, right? At this point, when you say section 19, township and range, you're within a mile, right? That's all you have to search anymore. Now it's going to tell you where to begin. We're going to commence at the southwest corner of said quarter section. What quarter section? That one. <laughs> that one we just described up there, right? And we're going to call it 201. We're going to do this. We're going to use a bearing and we're going to move a certain number of feet until we get to a point of beginning. And then we're going to start our survey from there, right? This is what this looks like in the uh, as a line, as a plot uh, going through here. And you're actually going to draw this exact same parcel today in class. All right, so we're going to start here. Here's a section corner, all right? Point of commencement. Uh, 201, southwest corner of section 19, township 36 north, range 6 east in Elkhart County, India. Right there. This is all the section numbers around it. Handy, right? A little handy decoder ring. This is 19, so I don't have to remember that weird zigzag shape, right? Here's my decoder ring. This is 19, this is 24, this is 25, this is 30, section 30, right? Um, forward there. They're probably in two different townships, right? Because I'm in the southwest corner of section 19, yeah. So this, this is over here is a whole new township. For that, here's section 19. Great. I'm starting here. I am moving across 1128.45 feet to point number 100, point of beginning. Awesome. And then my description started. That was this thing. Now my description starts. I go up this distance, this distance, this distance, this, and each one of these has a bearing associated with it. All right. For that. So that's what we do. This is, this part here is. This is a known point you can dig up and find in the field, and it's using the center of a road. And you can start there, and you can get here. And then you can do any survey you want. So we reference everything from these corner points, and then, um, particularly section quarter points. We like, and sometimes quarter quarter points are also set, and we can find those. It's, it's that reference system. You can find it in the field. Uh, you can hire four different surveyors. They can all find this and all find this point and all come out here and stake the exact same piece of property within uh, literally a quarter of an inch accuracy right, for that. And then we start working. That's our point of beginning, POB, right, for that. All right, that's, that's the background for today. That's uh, getting you started. You're going to be sick of typing those descriptions in, this description in particular, into the, the in-class part of today's lesson. This is the plot. This is the, actually the first parcel you're going to plot. Here's all the point numbers. This is what a true survey plot looks like. Uh, and that's the background to help you understand what, how we do surveying in the U.S. And almost all the U.S. is like this. All right, if you're out on the East Coast, it's going to be a little bit different. Most places you're going to have a system built like this uh, and to get you started. Uh, hopefully that helps you uh, on today's lesson.